and we are this is ringer off. We are recording and we are good to go. Unlock. Cool. All right, we're gonna get everybody inside here just before we get going on. Uh, I'm gonna do a couple of admin things, Michael and Alan. So I don't know if you wanna quickly introduce yourselves while people start floating on inside. And uh, I'm gonna just see what uh, how I can help Scott because he's having a little problem getting logged in right now. Hi, Michael. I'm Alan. This is Lisa. What's your name, Michael? <laughs> well, I'm Michael Mesmer. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm, I'm catching a little slow motion on my end. But uh, can you hear me, Alan? And Rob? Yeah, we can hear you me. fine. So you probably want to go to a still screen and not be videoing. Just go with audio. Yeah. I have an idea of a photo that you Yeah, I don't know how you do that. But anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Live, say, but... As long as you can hear me. I can do it for you. I'm going to turn your time. I'm going to turn your uh, I'm going to turn your camera off, Michael. I'll do it on my end, and then we'll just hear you, and then you should be good. Here we go. Oh, I turned mine off by mistake. <laughs> hey, Scott, how are you? Hey, Scott. Hi. How are you guys? Good. Good to see you, buddy. Cool. Good to see all of you. Hi. Hi, Lisa. All right, we just have a few more people logging in. Uh, hopefully, you can see the chat. Um, if you have your speaker turned way up, you turn it down. Get a little bit of echo. We've got James. No, that's not. All right, we've got a bunch of people showing up. Um, time is short. Um, we will get going on the way. I can still hear myself echoing to somebody's speaker. Scott, it seems to have started when you turned on. I'll turn myself way down. Thank you, sir. All right. Is that it? An external mic and a speaker? I'm not on an external mic, no. Okay. I don't know. It could be one of the other people. All right. Everybody else is muted. Everybody else. We can do that thing. All right. So let's uh, get underway. Uh, we'll just try and sort that echo out just one second. The recent thing, huh? Oh, what was that? Right. Well, there a little bit. Did that fix anything? Uh, no. We turned ours off and it's still. Go, Scott, just mute yourself a minute. Let's see if it's you. Just mute, mute your microphone. All right, let's try that. Uh, mute. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I've just muted you on my end, Scott. So what I'll do is I'll unmute you when we get going. So I've got you. Mute you muted. yourself when, when he's talking. Yes, I'm just going to take myself off. Well, he can hear me. He's just, uh, his mic's muted. So it's, it's actually going through his microphone. All right, thanks everybody for showing up. We have a, a couple of superstars in the house. Uh, I don't know if you missed that, Scott. I just muted you. So when, uh, when I when I, I'll just unmute you and then that'll solve the problem when we're ready to roll. Uh, we have uh, Alan Sands in the house. We do have Michael <laughs> Michael Mesmer that keeps dipping in and out. We've got Scott McFall. Uh, we do have a whole bunch of others in here. I'm just scanning real fast because uh, we are expecting Rich Guzzi to make an appearance. Uh, who else we got over in here? We're expecting Misty Knight. Misty Knight is in the house. Thank you, Misty. So I thought we would run this uh, and get underway. I know there's more people still logging on here because obviously uh, I can only talk from, from America, um, from the American perspective, that we, uh, the world has definitely opened on, on my end anyway. And I know talking to Alan the other day, you're, you're booking tons of shows and you're obviously on the road right now in Fargo. Uh, I just talked to Michael Mesmer the other day. He's got 13 shows in June. So, wow. you know, that, that's a lot of booking. So he's he's crushing it as well. Um, what are you laughing at, Scott? <laughs> Got him muted. I'm in Fargo. He's laughing at me for being back in North Dakota. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's his home territory. And I seem to always be in touch with him when I'm here. It's funny because we all circle around because I was just in Fargo last week. And then now mm -hmm. you're in Fargo. Scott, Scott's, you know, spent a lot of time in Fargo. Uh, we, we sort of like bounce around the same trail and spread breadcrumbs everywhere to the same gymnasiums, probably. But um, Hundreds of shows in Fargo. 
Hundreds. Literally. Writing school, school step. How do you feel about that, Scott? It's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. Hypnosis is very popular there for a reason. There were a lot of brilliant hypnotists there. Yeah, someone someone paved the way. A lot of them. Long oh. before me. We appreciate you, man. So yeah, the echo is definitely coming through your mic, though. All right, then I'll try to fix it. <laughs> That's for sure. So uh, let's get underway then. Um, Alan, let's, let's get Mr. Alan Sands and Misty, since you guys yes. are, are, are on the thing right now. What do you think? I've got a bunch of questions here, and uh, I'm, I'm going to, if anybody else wants to answer any questions, just put them in the chat, uh, and I'll be happy to uh, to, to get you in and, and answer the question. But um, I don't know about you guys. I'm, I'm seeing a, it's almost like the race to, to book dates, and the dates are the things that are now the commodity, which last year we the opposite was true, but now all of a sudden everyone's like trying to get all the hot dates. What do you think's going on, Alan, out there? You're doing loads of shows at the moment. People are making decisions at a last minute. I mean, a lot of things are booking less than 30 days out or at 30 days out. Canada has not opened up. Uh, Europe, has, you know, England has not opened up. We, you know, we lost Glastonbury for the, the second year. Yeah. Uh, Burning Man is not happening. So bigger monster festivals of that sort are not happening. Although the medium sized fairs, especially out in the Midwest, are definitely beginning to book. And of course, Florida has remained open. Ohio has opened. Um, you know, the high school season's booking, but it's not what it used to be. You know, I mean, my numbers were in the past, I used to do about 60 bookings in full, 30 of them were me, 30 were other people. And this year, my calendar is filling, but it's filling very slowly and late. And then there's like three prime dates that I've been booking anywhere up to five other people or four other people, you know, five people total. Um, but we're down in the numbers on the high schools, way down. And some of them haven't been able to do fundraising. You know, they, they haven't been in school. So they're whining that they don't have the money for the higher ticket items. And it's, you know, so some of them are cutting their price a little bit. Some of them are not. And, right. and some of the schools, the parent committees are going around the school to do these events. Right. They're moving them off the school property to do the events elsewhere since the school will not sanction the event. Right. Are you, are you finding, um, are you finding like a lot of people are doing it privately, like off school property? About 50, 50. Yeah. Yeah. More of them, more of the regulars more that used normal. to be on the school property are definitely moving off. So how are you handling last minute bookings? Are you still taking deposits? Are you still contracts in the normal way or is there anything you're sort, sort of short? Yeah, all of the above, you know, no rules. Um, sometimes yeah. we take a deposit. Sometimes we say, we're showing up. You sign the contract. We're going to take your word for it. You know, a lot of the people in the Midwest believe in a handshake. Um, you know, they will, they will. Um, verbal meet, agreements are good. Yeah, verbal agreements or, you know, a signed agreement is as good as the deposit. So if I'm driving to the event and I'm not going to be home <laughs> before the deposit, you know, gets to me. Yeah. So why take a deposit and I don't want to pay the credit card fees. I hate giving money to banks and you know, that I don't need to. So some of the jobs were not taking deposits with their last minute or other performers will just say, yep, sign the contract. We're good. You know, I've been, I've been using cash app and Vemo uh, now with clients and it, because there's no transaction fees and, and uh, you know, the day of they can elect to, I still collect deposits, but I do it through cash app. Uh, or Venmo, and I uh, uh, Venmo if that's pronounced rightly, and I get them to, um, you know, instantly send a deposit. So definitely no paper anymore. You know, no checks, online contracts, online DocuSign kind of thing. So I'm still okay. sort of contracting, but I'm just removing what was the old barriers of like, you know, sending anything in the mail. Don't do that. Having people sign tricky stuff, no more. It's just literally on their phone. They can just sign, you know. But the question is, does it come from somebody's personal account then? Or can the school pay you? 
You know, exactly. good question yeah. is that I've had both. I've had a scenario where uh, personal, and then they just invoice back the school, and school have their own cash app. Okay. And, I mean, yeah. And, yeah, we don't know what cash app is yet. So I don't see. think there's a I don't think there's a corporate account as such. Um, I, I think it's just um, it's accepted that it's an easy way to you know send and receive payments and do invoicing. So it's interesting how you've relaxed the rules, Scott. I'm going to bring you in because uh, just nod your head if you're booking shows. I know you're doing magic, mentalism, hypnosis. I'm going to unmute you. What's your experience, mate? Oh, hang on a sec. Here you go. You both unmuted. <laughs> you should be on now. Oh, having some tech here today. <laughs> oh, yeah, I don't hear you, Scott. Hang on a minute. Scott did say it's really important to be easy to work with in the chat. Try again, old Scott, but if you can. Uh, yeah, why, why is his microphone gone? I can hear you, Alan. Well, mute me and see if his comes on. Hmm. Okay. All right, you're muted. Scott, how you doing? Just log back in, mate. Bounce, bounce back in, and we'll ask the same question in a minute. He may have turned down his volume so low that he's not. You, know. <laughs> you got to love technology. Uh, yeah. All right. So he's going to rebound in. Uh, Michael Mesmer is floating around somewhere. Let me just see where Michael is. See if we can't get him on. Um, Michael in Los Angeles. Here we go. Let's see where he's at. And you know the other thing I've noticed just while we're we're getting these 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 guys all set up. Oh, here he comes. Hey, Michael. Hi. I, I hope this is a better connection this time. Yeah, perfect. We're, we're just talking about okay. influx of show bookings. Are you relaxing any rules? Are you doing anything different? How are you taking payments, deposits, that kind of thing? Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, I'm pretty much following my usual procedures that I always have. I, you know, I've we've, I've done them for years. I did. I did hear Alan say about some of the people up there in the other areas of the country. And yeah, it is really, it can be done in a handshake for sure. Um, but, um, you know, for me personally, it, re it involves traveling usually. So uh, even, even if it's up to Northern California, I just prefer to have a deposit. And I've been doing what you're talking about, uh, doing the electronic deposits, essentially. Are you using Cash App or the Venmo? Venmo. Yeah. Uh, and the other one that I like is uh, the Zelle or Zelly because it's tied straight to Bank I of America. Use that too. I use that too. Yeah, that one's good. It's instant. It's like as soon as they pay on that, it's a whole bunch of banks. So it might be, you know, if you guys are just watching this and you haven't already considered it, go ahead and get a bunch of these uh, these apps. Because what I noticed is I tend to I tend to now have all of them just in case. Um, yeah, they, it depends what the buyer prefers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, Scott's saying, I have not done a contract since COVID. Everything I've done in Florida has been a quick, easy, private party. Uh, they aren't worried about the liability. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I, don't th I think everyone's kind of realized we've got to work with each other. You know, we've got to work together a little bit more than, you know, maybe in the past when we had all these rules. The only thing I do, maybe a little bit different to you, Alan, is um, I have to have, I, wa I want a contract in my hands before I book travel, before I book flight, because I got so oh, yeah. many e-tickets and bloody, I got all these e-tickets and some of them have expired and I can't reuse them. And, you know, like I, I lost my status on Delta and I just don't want to mess around. So, you know, if I'm booking a flight, I want some money in my hand and it can be, it can be sent on Cash App or Venmo or Zelly or Zelle or whatever they call that. And, and, and um, my contracts are just online. They just, they can just sign them with their cell phone. So there's, there's definitely no paper being sent around, like no checks. I know we had that scenario chasing the check the other day. And, and I know some schools, you know, that that's all they have. They, they still have to do a purchase order. And I've got a corporate gig coming up, which um, he said, uh, you know, we have to do a purchase order. And then all of a sudden just paid me in full on on one of the cash apps. So, I mean, I think, I think we're slowly changing to online payments is becoming a norm and becoming a thing. Um, well, I'll tell you the other advantage to not taking the deposits is sometimes yeah. you can show up there and they pay you in cash. Yeah, that's that's right. So, cash is king. Right. Yeah, cash is good. We've done three shows in the last month, or we've got one coming up. 
but you know, two shows in the past that have paid us in cash. Right. We've got Scott coming uh, back on in a second here with a bit of luck. He says, uh, here he comes. Hey, mate. Hey, you hear me yet? Yeah, much better. Yay. Oh, that's better. And no echo. Yeah. Echo. So my my thing on deposits, I've never, ever taken deposits. Ever. Oh, what do you do? Really? I, 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 I believe there are, well, I like the idea of um, reciprocity debt. Like with the upsells and the back ends at the back of the show, whether it's selling private clients or selling products or the whole relationship of how the tone is with doing business with the, the company. If you're doing company parties, a lot of the time you're selling consulting at the back end of doing the hypnosis mm -hmm. show. And they're, they're doing, let's say they're doing an NLP training for their employees, or let's say they're doing a uh, hypnotic sales motivation communication class afterward or whatever. And like the whole doing business with you becoming like a greased shoot, you know, certainly the, the, uh, the contracts and stuff are all online and, and having them pay you on, whether it's PayPal or Venmo or whatever it is, it's great. But when, when we look at just doing a show, we can't make our living anymore doing like having one layer of sales. You know, all of us have been in the business during times when we could sell videos at the end of the show and get a high fee. But let's face it, there are more of us than there are ants on an anthill at this point. And so there, there has to be multi levels of sale for that company, or there has to be a way to get personal coaching clients from that audience. Because if you're going to live an executive income in the modern world as a hypnotist, I don't think you're going to do that going stare at the light. Now you're Elvis. <laughs> you know, there, there's got to be more to it than that. And I, I love entertaining people more than I love anything else in the world. Of course, I'd rather do that than anything. And, and I'm sure a lot of us are that way. But a lot of us are consultants, too. And so if we set up the way that that relationship works early, where we're the needless one that sets things up and we're the one that's meeting their needs and there's reciprocity debt at the end of that contract, the back ends, the, the, the things you mentioned at the end, the, the intelligence that you get listening to what's going on with their company or the, the group or their family or whether it's a weight loss client, it doesn't matter if it's an individual person that wants to quit smoking or if it's you know working for Harley Davidson, it works the same in each situation. So I want there, there to be reciprocity debt where I didn't seem to be needy in any way. And not everybody thinks like that, but it's really paid off for me yeah. very, very well. I can, I can understand how that works. Yeah. I mean, the, the, the you know, the, the power of reciprocation and uh, the, the unofficial debt, I, I can see how, you know, in a subconscious sense that would, that would definitely work in a, in a corporate setting. I, I know definitely for high schools, and we've talked about this on Facebook, but, you know, like high schools and, and colleges in particular, and especially fairgrounds, we've got a good good fairground se uh, fair season coming up. I'm all about just getting list building. I, I'm building a big list to hit them afterwards because, as you know, at a, you know, at a, at a, at a high school prom or, you know, post-prom or graduation, you, you don't have time to sell afterwards. I mean, they're straight into – you know, gifts and leaving. And then with fairgrounds, they're straight into food and watching the high dive show or somewhere else. May I, may, I, may I make a suggestion about the grad parties? Yeah, sure thing. I sell in the middle. And I sell like uh, academic improvement uh, okay. and products that are about college test prep. And I mention them in the middle of the show, not at the end of the show. Nice. And they sell very big actually and they usually sell on the website after on, on that that private link that private funnel afterward and the parents buy them and the kids buy them so it's usually that academic improvement thing that is the angle and then of course videos of the show they were just in that's okay. all we let me expand on this then so when you're in the in the moment in the middle of the show are you pushing them to a website? Are you having a sign-up sheet? I mean, how are you capturing? Let's say there's a couple hundred kids there. I have doing? a few. I have a few uh, just USB drives with me okay. that they can buy on site usually, okay. uh, and then I also push them to a link. But I would, I would um, basically do it after like the amnesia of forgetting the number eight. Okay. And then talking about memory, and basically doing a, a mini spin on memory and talking about test anxiety and test prep and mentioning how hypnosis helps that and then going to the next routine. And I mean, it's very, very subtle. Right. Yeah, sure. And, and what's mind blowing is it's huge. It's, it goes great, you know, 
And so when there's no time, usually I'll layer the, the uh, you know, fun, serious point, fun, and then just let them react to it. And because there isn't time. But I can't afford to just get that fee. Yeah, it's not enough. I, I can't afford to travel a long way and then just get the fee for the grad party. I wouldn't be able to, in, in the way the expenses are today, yeah. it, I think it's different. I think if you don't multiply on site at this point, it's yeah. not the same career it was. Yeah. I, I, you know, I, I don't disagree at all. I think that's a, I think that's a great strategy. I tend to do it the, I, t I tend to, you know, one of the things I've been doing is, so I'll say, all right, just before we get underway, you know, they're all chomping at the bit to volunteer for the show. Obviously, they're all sitting in the audience. There's all the, all the seats. Just before we get underway, it's essential. You need to do uh, three things for me. Uh, one is you need to text the word show to and then 727, you know, whatever the number is. And I get them all to physically opt in only because I'm going to send them a link when I get back to my little man cave hotel, the roadway in. You know, I'm going to send them a link as soon as I've got it on Vimeo and make them buy it. Second of all, I can follow up for next year's show. And I can start peppering them with text messages and emails and everything else, right? Uh, but then I say, in number two, um, I'm going to allow you to take as many photos and videos as you want to, not not moving forward in their face, but hashtag incredible hypnotist, all one word, Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, stumbled upon, Twitter, whatever it is. And then thirdly, you must silence your phone. And, that, and that's the only thing. Oh, and then if you come up and volunteer, you give your phone to a friend so they can do what I've just mentioned. Text. You're really, you're really good at building advocacy in the way you set all that up. I mean, you're really, I, I personally believe that each person in the audience is a $20 bill waiting to happen. Cause that's the cost of my, you know, show reel afterwards. Uh, and I know if there's 500 kids, kids, that's 500 times 20. And you're smarter than me. What's the math on that? If everybody was to buy a show, you know, $20 times, take out the hundred poor people. Well, take, I mean, it's, it's just a lot of money, right? So, I mean, that's the strategy. So we talked about taking deposits. Uh, some do, some don't. I know Michael Mesmer does not. I do. Alan, sometimes yes and no. Um, you don't take deposits, right, Scott? I don't. Okay. See, I do. I, I, I do take deposits. Um, contracts? Do you, do, you, do you have them do a contract? If I have to travel, I do a contract. Yeah. Yep. Alan, contracts? Everything. Everything's a contract. And I think Michael does too. He does. He does a contract. Let's move on. Let's talk post COVID. We've all done shows. What's your experience? Masks? No masks? Are they wearing them? Are they not wearing them? Are you wearing them? Are they not wearing them? What, what's happening, Alan, in your world? They are not wearing them. They're not. Are they? Actually, we had one party where everybody did. We had one party at a university where the university student union insisted that everyone wear a mask at all times. Yeah. We did not wear it during the show. Yeah. Uh, but this microphone. Yeah, I mean we're distancing away from everybody anyway. Yeah. But virtually every other show, there's been no masks. But in California, we know that the schools are mandating all types of very strong COVID safety measures. Yeah. So when we do the grad nights, you know, in a couple of weeks, those will all be COVID safe. I know. Yeah, you know um, sorry, Lisa, go ahead. We have face shields and hand yeah. sanitizer. Yeah, we that. bought 50 face shields. Yeah. And we still have 47 of them. I know, uh, I don't know if Eric's on, Eric Canned, but I know that he wears a face shield and mm -hmm. all the students wear face shields. And, and he's got like, you know, thousands of face shields. And, uh, and it's kind of part of his gig that everybody gets a face shield. I'm the same. I bought like 100, I, I got like these masks, incredible hypnotists on them, black mm -hmm. masks. I, I tell you, you can't breathe through that thing. You can't survive more than five minutes of a show. <laughs> or like literally, you just can't. And I'll give it to the kids, and uh, they're all like throwing all over the floor afterwards. <laughs> they don't want them. You know, some some day soon they're going to be a collector's item. Michael Mesmer is here. I'm just going to Michael. I'm going to unmute you, but I'm going to leave your camera alone. See if you can answer this. Uh, just unmute yourself, Michael Mesmer, uh, and give me your experience on the show so far. Uh, can you repeat that question for me there, Richard? Yeah, the, the, the question is about um, what's your experience with people wearing the masks, not wearing the masks in light of post-COVID? Are, are you are you wearing a mask on stage? Are you not? Yeah, um, 
for me personally, uh, I've been pretty stickler on it because um, personally, I just don't want to allow any possibility of people tracing anything back to me as far as um, there have been a couple of schools uh, in Texas in particular where they're not wearing the mask. However, I still do the social distancing on the seating. I still wear gloves and I wear a mask whenever I'm going to do like um, something one on one with them in their face. Uh, when I'm not in their face, when I'm just behind them or in front of them, I don't wear a mask uh, on any of the shows. But I do wear a mask. If I'm going to be within three to five, three or four feet of people. And again, I do the seating thing we discussed uh, a long time ago in our other seminar with the uh, V kind of W thing going on. And then uh, also I do do temperature checks with everybody that comes on stage. Even if they check at the event, I still do it myself. So you're doing temperature checks, mask, and seating. And, and the yeah, seating, like they don't have, I don't require the kids to wear the mask only because they're staggering seating. They're all at least three feet apart and they're all facing forward. So no one's breathing on anybody, but I prefer them to wear it if they can. But, you know, like Alan was saying, there are some states where they've released all the mandates. And so the gloves are still OK. You can make them do that. And you can do this, the temperature, you can do the uh, social distancing seating. But mask, it just doesn't work in like Texas or some of the states where they've totally released the mandates. Right. Yeah, and, and Florida's wide open. In fact, uh, the governor DeSantis just made it illegal to for for businesses to require you to wear a mask now. So he's just overridden. That's right, Scott, isn't it? He came on and overrid the. the so yeah. Florida will not wear masks, right? I, yes, that's true. Can I backtrack a second? Yeah. 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 Um. Heather was in a theater company down here that had a really interesting mask uh, because they were doing plays and they had to wear masks during the distancing and, and all the actors had to wear masks. Yeah. Right? And it was a theater community that was very strict and they had masks that come from the chin up and sit right here and are clear. And they're actually, they have a chin buffer and they go around and they're really slick. They solve a lot of problems. So, you know, if you're ever looking for the ones that, that, uh, they, they rest on your chin and they cup. And when I did shows with masks on, that's the ones that I, that I happen to wear because you can get the microphone with them. So they're neat. And Richard, Richard, can I interject something? Yes, sir. Uh, I was going to say that it's important for us to stay healthy at this moment also because we're all just coming out of this making money finally. Yeah. So for me personally, I want to keep following some of these protocol Good point. because for me, I don't want to not be able to go out and make money because right now it's really starting to crank. So I, it's not so much protecting the public. It's not so much if you have a political aspect to it. It's it's very much that you, you want to keep yourself healthy. I've been vaccinated. I know Alan has. Uh, I have both my shots. I'm totally cool. But even so, I don't want to take even the slightest chance of even getting a bad cold at this point because I want to keep on the road now that things are happening. And you know, on, on that note, the uh, so, so Norwegian Cruise Line is back up and running in July. They are making it mandatory to perform on the ship. You must have COVID shots and you must have the certificate on file. And I know that that's a hot topic because some people are like, well, that's, you know, it is what, you know, that's an infringement. Well, if it is, don't work on the ship because that's what they require. So that's what you have to supply. And it's just, that's just right. It is. They're, they're coming back in July. So, I mean. I, I think the world, I think we're going to open up faster than we, we think. And on this note, my next question, and it's an open question to you guys, are you seeing a demand for more bookings now and in the summer? Are you, are you seeing an increase plus for clinical? Alan? Over last year? Oh, let's, let's just let's erase, let's, let's erase last year and say 2019. <laughs> we're booking into June at this yeah, point. Yeah, we're like 60%. I was saying 50-50. But now I feel like um, we're moving a little bit higher. Um, you know, my fair in May canceled. My fair in August, early August, canceled in San Jose. Um, trying to think what other fairs did we have. We didn't have any in June. Um, we're waiting on Canada, which is a big one, a 10-day in September. Where are, you going? Where, are you, where are you going in Canada? Uh, we're doing the Western Fair, okay. which is London, Ontario. Um, you know Toronto. And I would love to jump Canada's in. pretty tight right now. Pretty yeah, just, yeah, just in the comments, if you are from Canada, just jump in and let us know the state of play down there because I know these guys in Canada they can't even assemble. You know, as far as I'm aware, they can't still do anything. Yeah, if they come into the states, they have to actually um, 
Richard said closed. Quarantine themselves for two weeks when they That's return. Crazy. All, all so. of my friends in Canada say that they're completely locked down. I have I have yeah. multiple, multiple schools that I consult for up there, and they're in misery and oh. and freaked and exhausted. Yeah, and they don't have the death rate. They don't have the death rate because they are keeping things locked down. So it's a matter of them. Yes, people are getting sick, but and they're feeling their numbers are. You know, they they're not vaccinating as much, but they're. They don't have the death rate compared to us. They've got like one. I see Carl Smith here, but I'd love to know what's going on in England, and we've got someone here from Switzerland. And pipe up in the in the chat. We'd love to know what. I think Europe's just reopened. I think I know England has now pubs, but only outside. So I'm I'm sure hypnosis shows might start to get booked in in the UK and uh, around Europe with a bit of luck. But I think Canada, no, right? It's just stalemate. There's just nothing going on. Michael, you seen an increase in bookings, Michael Mesma? Uh, yeah, I mean, in the last uh, in the last three weeks, I've booked uh, fifteen ground nights, and uh, awesome. also Could I have you... right now. It's not my usual fair season, but I have seven fairs solid, and then nice. um, I also have been booking a lot of private events. In fact, I just booked a big one in Beverly Hills a few days ago. I was very shocked and happily surprised. Actually, I'm going to make more than I've made ever on a single show. Uh, nice. And uh, I'm, I'm not saying to brag. I'm saying this to tell everybody that there's lots of hope here. You're finally um, you know, getting uh, over a thousand dollars. That's awesome, man. Uh, that? <laughs> You're finally uh, getting over a thousand. Yeah, I finally am. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, uh, but they're actually in this home that I went to, uh, let me just give you a, an idea. They have a real Picasso first edition hanging over their fireplace. So nice. uh, if that gives you an idea of the kind of money they, they're dealing with. And Dancing with the Stars puts on the opening show. You're going to have uh, so to put your cell phone in a Ziploc bag and hand it to the big, the big bouncer. Yeah, Michael, that wasn't a Picasso. It was a portrait of you. <laughs> oh, thank no you. No but, yeah. I'm saying, I, again, I'm not trying to be braggadocious. That's not why I'm saying this. I'm saying it because I want you all to know that it's starting to happen. It's going to happen. And we don't have, need to have fear anymore. Uh, I'm just looking at the chat. Grant, Grant here says UK is open June 21st, outside shows. And uh, there's lots of new interest. And I think there is. Uh, people are keen to get back to doing interesting things. Of course, hypnosis is interesting. So it's it's nice to see. I think we're finally around. You know, we're we're past the curve and we're back. I think we are. So here's yeah. my next question to the stage performers. So that have been doing shows. I know Alan has, Scott has, Michael, you have, and a few others that are listening have. Are you are you doing any different routines? Have you have you like removed some and added some new ones? And if you have, what are they, Alan? Ever Anything so slightly. I mean, a little less body contact. Yeah. Um, you know, we're not being as protective as Michael is. We we want to be, but we're not. Um, we, we talk about it a lot. What do you do? Forget? Is it just because you forget? Yeah, he, he has his show memorized. That's it. That's the way it goes. He gets lost. It's if hard when it's three o'clock in the morning and you're as old as Alan. And also, you, and also, you lose your funniest material. So it's you know difficult to you know give up your strongest material. Because yeah. body contact of any sort yeah. is funny, you know, especially with high school kids. Um, so, I mean, there's slightly different routines that we're doing, but not really. I'm not much. Scott, anything different? I'm sure you are. you got a creative brain. Well, you remember the, the show that you booked that I did for you with, yeah. with the Orthodox family? Yeah, yeah. That Over in Orlando. So I, I went through all the research, you know, to find out what the Orthodox Jewish thing would be and to handle that right. And I got there and they completely blew it all off. And um, so it was interesting because I, I did have to do new things to keep, you know, the girls separated from the boys and this and that, you know. But it was it was fascinating because, um, you know, I'm doing a lot more mentalism right now and working on a show that has to do with the seminars. So I'm always taking the new routines from the mentalism and sticking them in the middle of the hypnosis act just to find out which ones are terrible and which ones are good. Since the you know hip acts are always strong all the way through, you know. Yeah. But while I'm while I'm chatting, I just have to show you this cool just a little flashback, right. from Ormond, McGill. Nice. This is Orman's original brochure from wow. when he was in California, and I just love this piece. Uh, 
has enthused the famous Eddie Arnold, Charles Boyer, Betty Davis, Hedy Lamar, John Wayne, Will, William Bendix, and so on. So you look at look at look at Ormond was such a nice guy. What like, does that say like, underneath? East Indian something? Miracles, that? yes. Miracles. It's 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 very um, you know uh, sensitive to different cultures. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. But but, but the yeah. the thing is that that uh, you know Ormond was such a great guy, such a nice person and handled himself so well and and i i just wish that legacy would just keep flowing through all the hypnotists in our business you know i wish it keep would always work like that you know yeah and I, I, I hear you after covid i hope that we all know that that's how you get the most bookings you know well. I, I think we've got a bit more unified you know i i do i think you, there, there are people a lot of people behind the scenes that kept in touch with each other made sure we weren't like you know trying to hang ourselves in the bathtub or you know there's, there's a lot of people that cared out there and i found that a lot of people, you know, we do support each other and, and somewhat care for each other because we're road warriors and we're on the road a lot. And, you know, I mean, we, you know, we, there, it does take a toll on you. And it's nice that we have forums, albeit we went quiet for a while because I think we all started off supporting each other like big time with COVID. And then and then we realized it was going on for much longer than it should have done. And then we kind of just gave up. But now I think we're back. And, and I think we've got a good support mechanism and we should we should keep it. We're not really competing with each other. We're actually, um, you know, everyone that sees a great hypnosis show wants another one, you know? Can I, uh, I wish we all like bands. What's that? Uh, I was going to say, Richard, uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Oh, I was going to say, Alan is one of the biggest, kindest people. He always tries to make sure that other hypnotists get work. And I want to thank Alan for that. Uh, publicly, uh, he he throws me gifts on occasion. He also is like so many other hypnotist friends of mine. So Alan is a living example of what you're talking about. Yeah, right? I agree. Yeah, Alan Alan has stepped off the political glass on Facebook a little bit more nowadays. Right, yeah, there's a secret yeah. to that. <laughs> is it called you? <laughs> no, it's called having a democratic president. <laughs> oh, anyway, let's move on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Two Facebooks. Two Facebooks. Oh, two. <laughs> That's funny. All right. So uh, feel free to um, add some questions in the chat. So, so far we're agreeing. I think the interest level is higher than, uh, you know, I'm, I'm seeing like a really, uh, I'm seeing a lot of leads coming in and uh, I get my leads mainly on my website. I know some people get leads, uh, you know, on Gigmaster, Gig Salad. Whatever else is out there, there's a, a lot. But Alan, you rank really well on social media uh, on uh, SEO. I see you, you're like, uh, and you know, you you do very well on SEO. I know that um, I do pretty well on SEO on on the search engines, and I'm just seeing a lot more visitors. I'm, I'm seeing a lot more unique visitors coming on the website. Uh, we have an opportunity to, um, which is my next question, really, for Michael. Uh, to the public have a keen interest in hypnosis, and Michael, you're doing a lot of work. Uh, with the media, educating them and sort of giving them content. So, um, first of all, why and what's the effect of it for you? With, with well, you know, uh, first of all, also in answer to your last question, I wanted to add something. Uh, I've been adding in street hypnosis uh, before my uh, proms and grad oh, nights. No. And the reason for that is because I'm qualifying the people that are coming up ahead of time so that I can get right into the show without oh, doing a lot of work so That's i've been doing not. street set up and i do that for about an hour before the show and then i already have the people chosen so when they get on stage there's less uh physical interaction that has to happen and i can get right into the performance so just a note there mm -hmm. um it's you know it's worth it and you give a little extra to the buyer right now which they're really happy with so and for yeah. me i like it i always like to hone my skills so it's a really cool thing to do just a note there on that subject is that um, is that a new thing then have you just started doing that like this year yeah i've always done street hypnosis separately as another uh, aspect uh yeah. if they don't have a stage or they want hypnosis so i've always done that but uh, as just a, a standalone but um but i've been doing this uh, especially private parties i do a lot of it but uh but with the grad nights and proms now uh, the deal is, of course, as we're talking about with the distancing issue, Alan was referring to it, uh, you do have to work much harder to get everyone hypnotized on stage when they're not connected physically together. Yeah. So uh, by doing the street hypnosis, I don't, I've sidestepped that issue. 
so that when they get up there, they're already ready to go, ready to go in trance, and they're ready to have fun, and they don't have all the trepidations they normally would have just coming up on stage cold. So um, it's just a way to deal with the COVID thing to keep the show more effective. So that's a yeah. suggestion that I would give. That's um, yeah. And as far as the sorry, go ahead. No, no, that's a that's a smart that that's a smart approach. I like it. Yeah, it's just with it's just because you know we don't we do lose a lot of people using the distancing and everything if we don't get them preset. So it, this way, my numbers are still equally as good as always as far as how many people stay on stage. And also the routines go far better because they're already you know, before they step on into the stage and on the chair. Right. And then we was asking you about the, uh, the media. You did a whole bunch of new media. Yeah. Well, you know, the thing is, Richard, um, you know, when we got into this COVID thing for a while, I sat tight hoping things were going to move on. And then I realized that it was going to be long term. So I thought, you know, um, I better learn to be my own publicist and learn to I took a couple of seminars. Um, um uh, and uh decide i was going to you know promote myself now the ultimate aspect of that is yes i've been doing a lot of youtube interviews a lot of podcast interviews i started my own podcast um and then beyond that because of all the energy i generated i have a uh, show coming out uh, not my own show but i'm guesting on a show on the reels channel coming out this month uh, nice. autopsy it's called autopsy the last hours of and um they connected with me because i started connecting with all these services, free services, mind you, no investment, but where I could submit, um, you know, pitches to people. And you're familiar with that, I know. And yeah. um, so I got I got this autopsy last hours of which will be on forever on their channel. So it's going to be a really good promo for me. Um, I can't tell you who the story is yet because it's um, in the contract. I'm not allowed to say who the subject is of the uh, show, but uh, it'll be coming out sometime either this month, be in next month. It's on this season of of uh, the Reels Channel's Autopsy Last Hours Of. But I will tell you, by doing all of these things, I've upped my therapy business by probably 50 to 70% um, because you're getting more exposure. And people say, well, why are you doing all of these shows and you're not getting paid for all these online things? Well, because it's what you get from them. It's yeah. not, you know, you don't worry about that. You're getting free advertising. And then people say, well, why do you some that only have 25, 50, 100 listeners? Well, 25 listeners, that could be 25 sessions at 250 apiece. So, you know, you just, uh, you you make it happen. You generate energy. Let me, let me just say something, because that, that's the thing that I, I got involved in. And I know Scott did too, and I'll bring you in a second, Scott, that the media is, the, the media is so important to, for what we have, because, you know, reporters want stories and we have content. And when the two collide, great things happen, you know. Uh, and the thing is, there's a lot of reporters out there hungry for angles and hypnosis in general is a great angle for all kinds of different things. I know Rory right now has got an angle, whether it's good, bad or indifferent. I mean, Rory Fulcher in the UK uh, got a full page thing in the uh, in the you know newspaper over in the UK, The Sun. He's going to do well with that. Good, bad or indifferent. And and one, one thing uh, just building on what you said there, Michael, I think we should all be doing more me more media because um this stuff I did in 2012 that is still giving me clients. Fear of butterflies. Right. I, I, I helped someone on the doctors see, uh, on CBS. Fear of butterflies in like 2015 or 16. And I had a client the other day, Fear of Butterflies. And, and she sent me a testimonial on Google that she went inside a uh, you know butterfly enclosure. The posh word for that is, is a vivarian or something. And goes inside there and starts touching monarchs and butterflies. But at the time, you know, it's all your money, it's all your expense, it's all your time. Uh, you're not getting anything for being on a hundred podcasts for a hundred people you've never even heard of. But later on down the line, it serves you well because it it's digital right. dust. You know, and the, this digital dust never dies. It just keeps re repeat. You know, finding its way back around on online and getting you shows and getting you clients. So I'm very. Right. Uh, very awesome to see you doing that. And Scott, I know you've got media experiences probably still feeding your uh, your clinics and your show, right? Yeah, during the years when I was doing the big arena shows, like opening for Johnny Cash or those kinds of things, or doing the 10,000 person crowds and all that, we did tons of, you know, every every city you had a media um, schedule. So you do every talk show you could do in every town. And, you know, we'd have the angles that get mailed to every media source. And I did hundreds and hundreds of those interview shows, the local shows, you know, during the 80s, the 90s and all those years. And, and, and that's great. And I also worked at KXMB. But one of the things to think about is that hypnosis has always had the pre-talk begin in the ad. 
And a lot of people forget that. And so Phineas Quimby, who was the hypnotist to Mary Baker Eddy, you know, Mary Baker Eddy was a testimonial ad for Phineas Quimby in the paper. Okay. Uh, and, and so a lot of the time we forget that our show, like when people were walking in at the Minot Air Force Base, I know you play that area. When I'd be at uh, Reflections Lounge that used to be in the hotel up on North Hill in Minot, for example, we'd be playing there three weeks. And all we do is we'd put up pictures of all of the people who had been hypnotized in that show Spot. on big foam core. And when people walked in, we didn't have to do a pre-talk. I'd walk up and take my sunglasses off and 20 people would fall down. And they'd have eye fibrillation and hypnotic masking because the pre-talk was there watching and talking about those foam core boards walking into that bar, right? So when you're setting up the way that you do the interviews, when you're setting up the way that you do the PR, you have two things that you're doing. You're, you're an advocate for hypnosis. And there, it's very important to understand that telling people to do PR can be a catastrophe because some people are terrible at PR. Right. Some of the most terrible things that have happened to the hypnosis industry are people who did interviews who were megalomaniacs or narcissists. There was a terrible disaster in Dallas years ago with a big news story. So it's a double-edged sword. PR has two edges, the horrifying edge and the successful edge. Yeah, good and, point. And what you've got to fall in love with is the fact that when you, have a, when you have a room full of attendees that you're educating, you have to provoke a response to watch how they happen to be so that you as a trainer can take in this person's this type of character. Because when you throw gas on a fire, not all these performers are, they're not all created equal. Not all the students are created equal. Not all their, their interviews will be equal. Um, so, and I'm not talking about just creating chaos for fun. Professor Leonardis, early in the hypnosis industry, would send, the reason that we have the misconceptions of hypnosis is professional, Professor Leonardis. He would go into a town, he would send an advanced man who would go to one cafe and tell everyone in that cafe hypnosis was the devil's work. And it was terrible and it was going to destroy the people in the town. And he'd go to the other cafe in that town and tell them it healed several people. It fixed a bunch of people in the other town. It's a miracle. And you get the whole town fighting so they would picket the theater. And the reason that the shows were all full is that he would get the theater picketed in every city in the United States. So Leonardis is who created this situation where we started saying the stupid things that we say. Let me clear up some misconceptions. Yes, go ahead. That's all we, we, we are who promoted the misconceptions of hypnosis. Professor Leonardis started that and we've always done it. Because hypnotists knew long before the rest of the media understood it, that if you create the paradox of two sides fighting each other, it creates that trap of neurotic thinking. So we've been doing that since the beginning of time, sadly. But when you're, when you're doing these PR things, it's super easy to get on. The, the question is, is it super easy to make it pay off? Right. In my experience, it's always paid off. It, it's always come back tenfold almost. And I know Michael's getting the same, getting the same result. Right. Um, quickly, I got a question from Andy. I can't answer this. Maybe you can, Scott. Somebody else. Uh, what do you all think? Uh, when we, it, what, what do you all think we can do to turn the industry on its head? I saw co colon. I'm going to butcher this. Mockery hypnoprov, and it was an interesting presentation of hypnosis skits with a skilled improv actor. I probably got that wrong, but do you know what? Do you know what Andy's talking about? What is that? No. Well, a lot of people like there are a lot of acts in uh, that are fake hypnosis acts. Like there's a lot of people that do not know how to do a real hypnosis act. Lots and lots. And so there's all kinds of people walking around on stage believing they're supposed to whisper what to do to the various people on stage. I mean, it's just ludicrous, crazy things. But there's also. The idea, yeah. Method acting. You know, the, the idea of method acting is great. But if you're going to turn the industry on its head, look at how great Chris is, or no, uh, Darren Brown. Look at how great Darren Brown's image is. Regardless of, I don't know him personally. I know some people love him, some people don't. I do love his show. His shows are amazingly great. And what we need are more hypnotists who are willing to go that extra mile. Like when I did the Guild a few years ago, I included a Mesmer bit with a Gossamer flight at the end of the Hypnosis Act, for example. Most people are not touring with props much anymore you know but but we've got to up our game in terms of the image that we're portraying and it can be a farce or fun or it can be silly it doesn't matter what character you're playing on stage but it does have to be an art it needs to be an art the same way the magic castle makes magic an art you know it, it needs to be at that level and and we need to be a better example for the people coming in ourselves i mean i know we're all reasonably good at our job but but we need to 
go ahead and race each other so that we're in a nice way so that we create that artistic integrity yeah. to pull everybody up, you know? Yeah. I, I, I remember when you, I remember some of the hypnotists from Europe were saying that they do carry lights. They do carry full sound systems. They're pulling did, trailers filled with equipment because I did they're competing on that level as well. Yeah. I did so, 25 years. I toured with full equipment for 25 years where every club I was in had a stage. Every yeah. club I was in had a backdrop. The thing is, I'm just, I'm, too old. I have an artificial heart valve. And I'm cranky. So like I, I I'll do that when I have to. But the thing about see, all my friends were in bands and I'd watch them have to load in and load out. And I thought, who do I think I am that I'm going to walk in with a briefcase? My audience should see something good, you know, and but I like playing the fairs best, the kind of stuff you're doing, you know, uh, yeah, we have to load a bunch of crap. Guess what? <laughs> we're, to we're towing a 20 foot trailer now. See? Too. Yeah. See? So. Guess I mean, what? we've got a Model <laughs> T in there and 16 steamer That's trains. right. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, you're yeah. annoying. Are you yeah. Yeah. But see, that's really very cool. Oddities. But that's really cool because it's unique. Yeah. It's very creative. It's very cool. Yeah. So we well, are starting to kick off. And then COVID seemed to have yeah. decided. We had that. our best yeah. booking year for fairs. Yeah. Coming up in 2020. For 2020. So much It'll for hindsight. Back. It'll yeah. come back. So I'm conscious of the time, and I did. I didn't want to make this go over an hour. Where we've got about you know five six minutes left. Uh, this is for any last questions in the chat. If you don't know where the chat box is, it's kind of on the bottom right. Um, so really, this is kind of like a free for all. If you were to give one golden piece of advice moving forward for 2021, 2022, as a touring stage hypnotist, what would that be? Get back on stage. Yeah, I, I like that. Do it. And, and if you don't have any shows booked, send us a message. There you go. Well, also, I mean, you know, do the little jobs if you're not working. Yeah. You know, don't. Um, do house you know, parties. Do honestly, we are doing $400 house parties locally. Yeah. We're doing $600, $800 house parties locally. Um, yes, we're also getting 2300 you know, for a lot of our shows. Um, but just keep working you know yeah, get on it's stage. like last year we did 15 shows we were stale yeah. you know and we needed to season ourselves and because we do a two-person show also there's this weaving us together yeah. um and being smooth at it so we just needed to be doing shows and so get out there and do shows and if you're not doing shows then you need to come to our boot camp yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do the little. Uh, hang on. So I, I, I like. I like the point that get on stage because I'm, I'm doing the same thing. I did a house party for twelve people, and it was painful. I mean, and I felt the pain. I felt the burn. I was like, oh shit. And then I had to bring my own sound system. You know, my own Bose. I have a Bose L1 with my own mixer and my own this, that, and the other. And I'm looking at it all. I'm going, oh shit. And there's like cables everywhere, and you know, and I have to put all this together. <laughs> For twelve people, yeah. with in their living room and do this yeah. damn well show and and try and and the hardest part was getting all my tech back to normal. But now I can do it second nature. It all just came back. And those twelve people, I got a really nice tip. It was a nice paying gig, not bad at all. They were happy. I, I was painful. You know, the pain was hurting at first, but I, I tell you, two years ago I would have declined that gig. I would have turned it down. But now I'm, I'm taking the gig. And I'm doing them, and I'm, cause I, I'm like what you just said, you know. Once that momentum kicks in, it just keeps rolling, and then you, you know, that's how you're getting all your skills coming back if you've been sat at home for a while. So it's great advice, uh, Scott. I would say, uh, first of all, it's great to get to listen to Michael and Alan and yourself. Uh, you all sound amazing. Uh, Richard, I know you a little bit. I don't know Alan and Michael that well, and and I'm sorry, I don't know your name. Ma'am, Miss Lisa, 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 Lisa. My claim to fame, Scott, was um, I I got them shacked up to each other in Vegas, and they've been together ever since. I can see this. Clearly. <laughs> I can see this clearly. Yes. Well, I just I really enjoyed listening to Michael and, and Alan and yourself. I mean, you're all very bright people, and it's amazing. Um, there's always a bell curve to celebrity, and when you're marketing, this is a celebrity status marketing thing, selling stage hypnosis. And so there's a bell curve. 
you have a, a situation where your fame builds and you get a, a lot of amazing things happening. And then you have to learn to capitalize when you're coming down on that on the back end of that bell curve. And so, you know, I've been paid, you know, tens of thousands of dollars to do a show and consult for a company or I've been paid 300 bucks to do close up magic, you know, standing at a picnic table. <laughs> and I feel exactly the same doing both. I love doing the $300 picnic table just as much as I love to get that consulting gig. And I think that's an important part of this. Working is working. And and uh, it's all awesome. You learn something on the shows that go terrible. You know, last year I posted, I had a, I bombed uh, just before COVID. I had a ton of shows that I was doing close up at the Magic Castle to get my close up skills back. And I bombed in a big show because I hadn't done it for a while and I was awful. And I posted all the things I learned from bombing. Yeah. It happens. It, happens. You know? it just, it happens. And so I think for those people who are newer, just, just, do, 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 go, 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 try, try, try. And, and remember bombing makes you awesome later. You know, bombing makes you awesome later. Awesome. Good. Michael, any words of wisdom for, for moving forward in the next 12 months? Oh, I could do an hour, but <laughs> <laughs> um, I would say, first of all, to uh, just support what's been said by Scott, Alan and Lisa. Um, yes. I remember Marvin Roy. I was working with him at a, a gig, a close up gig in LA. Uh, decades ago with Marvin, and I said to him, uh, Marvin, you know, because he was a big star of magic. I said, Why are you doing this close up gig? And he said to me, Because you work, you work. He said, The work is what's important. Yeah. Work, and, and every time you work, you get more better at what you do. So you always work. Now, having said that, and supporting what they were saying through Marvin's uh, brilliant words, um, I would say that. Um, the main thing here is it's not that much different than any other time, except that there's going to be a lot more competition in this. That... Oh, we're losing him. Well, maybe it's a good thing. I didn't like what he was saying. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Did we just... Alan was actually talking about that. Michael had said to him, just work, just take the games and... He said, yeah. yes, that's what we're going to do. He was just saying, my million that. dollar idea is, and then yeah, it just right? yeah. I buried it in the, yeah. <laughs> All right, so uh, talking to boot camps, Alan, you, you, so while you're talking about your hypno boot camp, uh, I'm not going to offer anything other than I have a Facebook group, which I am uh, going to give you right here that you can all click on. Uh, this is a, a marketing group that you get a chance to click on. I'll give you 30 seconds before I take that off. And um, we're talking about how to book shows, how to get leads, and how to um, basically get more leads into your into your business and improve your sales funnel. That's that one gone. And hopefully you saw that. You can click on it. Join the Facebook group. Uh, Alan, before you mention your boot camp, just one more. I'm doing an online uh, stage hypnosis class if you're interested. It is... 17 bucks right there if you want to join click take a look 17 bucks a month uh added we're having a whole bunch of new content that's the uh the new sort of stage training if you're interested that goes off alan boot camp talk to us what you got uh, hypnosisbootcamp.net it's nice. all there so hypnosisbootcamp.net you know what i like about your boot camp you've been you've been sort of ripped off but never what was it imitated but never is it copied? Did yeah. I copy? Did Never I copy? duplicated. Imitated, not duplicated. Yeah, because, you know, you've got a good thing going on. And really, you were the creator of that. And you sort of, you know, you take them to fairgrounds and give them real world experience and get them on stage doing stage time, which is genius. I mean, I mean, that's the way to learn. It's like get, walking on the stage, feeling those butterflies, feeling that emotion and looking at the audience reaction. I remember some video of some of your, your boot camps, you know, some people crumble, right? Some people just, just can't handle it on stage. It's yeah. And it's harder than it looks. And some people, that's where their careers have taken off because yeah, they all, the yeah. all the above, but also watching other people struggle is yeah. one of the greatest learning experiences. Cause you go, I, Oh, yeah. I can also get up there and struggle and it's okay. Yeah. And I can do better than what he just did or she just did. And yeah, there's just so much to learn by the boot camp because you're also networking with a half a dozen other that are at the same level as you. You're not going to Vegas and watching celebrity, you know, polished performers that have done 20,000 shows. 
Yeah. You're watching people that have done three, five, 20 shows yeah. get up there and learn together. And yeah, it's pretty amazing. Understand. Everybody that comes on the road with me, and that's what's good about this boot camp, is I don't think they quite understand how hard it is. They just think it's easy because we're just showing the easy bits on YouTube, Facebook, you know, Facebook Lives. What they don't see is the video editing at midnight in the hotel room, or you know, you're trying to get you're trying to get some food because you've been at the fairground all day and nothing's open. You, you know, you're getting gas station food or Waffle House, yeah, and it's, people, it's Waffle House. And it, you know, it's a hundred degrees, and you're doing three shows a day, but you don't feel very well. In a and course, you're yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. No. Uh, Scott, what uh, you got going on? in Washington this year. I'm sorry. Boot camp is in Washington. Washington, this year. yeah. I think that was James. Uh, where is the boot camp this year? Washington State. Yeah. Okay. Washington uh, State. Southwest Washington Fair, Washington State Fair, or whatever it is. August 16 nice. through 22, I believe. Perfect. Uh, Scott, what you got going on? Anything that people can get a hold of you for? Yeah, most of the workshops are sold out already because of COVID holding them up. They're all sold out. And mm -hmm. Most of the mentorship spots are taken. But I'm doing a new thing where I'm teaching NLP and perceptioneering on sailboats, where I'm oh. teaching somebody to sail while they're trapped on the boat in pods of three people and doing PRAC and master PRAC while they're learning to sail and dealing with each other in wow. the new situations and it rocks. It's it's very cool and it's it's similar to when I was making people round pen horses before they learned to do rapport skills. Um, but it's it's this new sailing teaching thing is a riot. That sounds uh, but cool. but I, I'm only working with three people at a time doing that and it's a great experience. But um, you know at the at the moment um, I enjoyed you all so much. I had a blast watching and listening to you all you're you're amazing. Uh, I unfortunately am actually teaching this weekend, so I got to jump off. And uh, we'll do it again. Hey, I, I loved it. Have fun, you guys. Take care, Michael. What you got going on? Anything that they can follow you on or catch up with you with? Oh, oh there he comes. Hey, Michael, you're on, man. Um, if you're talking to me, I can't hear you guys. I'm sorry. I can hear you. Can you, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. If, if you can hear me, then um, I will just give an answer based on you know, knowing what you've been talking about. So um, as far as what I do, I do private coaching with entertainers and help them to hone what they do. And so if anybody wants to get a hold of me, they can get a hold of me uh, through my website or Richard, you can just connect them. Uh, but sure, essentially I do one-on-one. -on -one. I don't do seminars or group things. It's one-on-one -on -one. and I've helped a lot of hypnotists and magicians, especially female magicians who I work with a lot to hone their skills and their talent. Um, and so I'm really proud of that. But also, um, yeah, just finishing on my last statement real quick, because I didn't get to finish out my statement um, in far as uh, what to do now. Uh, it's very important that we make sure that we fit the booking rather than the booking fitting us. Um, mm -hmm. In the past, we've, with, uh, with our careers flying the way they have and so successful, most times people call us and they want us to be in their booking. But now, because there's going to be such an influx of all kinds of entertainment, hungry and ready to get back to work, yeah, it, we're going to yeah, have it. to find a way to fit their needs more so. So we have to yes. look to that, look how to tailor ourselves to fit their needs. And in doing so, we'll be able to uh, uh, hold on to our work that we need to hold on to and develop new bookings. 100% agreed. Uh, Alan's got the link for the boot camp in there. I'll follow up with everybody with an email and I'll, I'll put that link in there, Alan, as well. And um, the one or two other offers that people had. And uh, I'm going to dangerously do a thing before we go. I think we should do these chats again. So I'll set up another one, and hopefully we'll, um, we'll 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 have some different topics with different things going on. Uh, just before we close out, it's going to redirect you, but I'm going to unmute everybody. We'll probably crash the whole internet in the southern hemisphere, but we'll give it a shot. And if you want to take your mic uh, to put your cameras on, you're more than welcome. If not, thank you all for showing up. I'm going to take you all off mute, uh, and uh, we'll just um, goof off for a second here. Have a party. Take all the mic, uh, take all the cameras off. Andy, turn your camera on. It is happening. Everybody, on, Andy. Is Where's Andy? unmuted right now. You're all live, or should be live if you choose to be. I'm going to stop this recording. You don't get to see you all very often either. Oh, Andy's not here anymore. Uh, it says users were unmuted. Okay, here we go. So, yeah, you should all be on and live and happy to do things. I don't know how I. That didn't do anything, did it? No, they're typing. Are you to unmute yourself?
There we go. There's some. Have to click a couple of buttons to get let in. Hey guys.